How's it, how's it? And today we're looking at the work of William Eggleston, a pioneering color photographer who began in the late 1960s. Famously dismissed by Ansel Adams, his work has gone on to achieve international recognition and remains as divisive today as it ever has been. Hi there, I'm Alex and thank you for joining me today on The Photographic Eye. William Eggleston is famous for his vibrant and, and lovely sumptuous prints in, in colour of, of the seeming mundane and, and ordinary that surrounds us. As a young photographer in Memphis, he complained that there was nothing to photograph in the town because everything was, was just simply too ugly. Uh, and his wife responded by saying that he should go out and photograph the ugly. And, and, and he certainly made that a hallmark of, of his career from the late 1960s. Now that Eggleston is in his late 70s, he kind of, you know, obviously has a bit of a retrospective um, look across his career. And a lot of people have considered that, that, that there must be hidden meaning and, and structure to his photographs. And one of the things that I really love about Eggleston is that he doesn't try to, to overthink anything about his, his images. And he just says, look, it, they just happen. And while he believes that there are things in them that people can discover, for the most part, he's just happy with it being a photograph that he likes and doesn't really want to overanalyze anything. Of course, the irony is that we're going to spend this video sort of looking at Eggleston's work and, and I'm going to, we're going to be sort of, sort of discussing it. Whereas the truth is we could, I could just show you 10 minutes worth of his, of his images and let you make your own decision about, about whether you like his work or not, whether it speaks to you. This is a really important thing to, to consider when looking at, at any photographer's work is, is ultimately, you know, do you like what you see? Does it, does it move you? Does it, does it inspire something within you? To try and like photography because it's got, you know, perfect composition or exceptional exposure or, or the focus is just so, I think some would, removes us from the idea of what photography ultimately should be. And that is a way of responding and seeing the world that is around us in a way that helps other people feel something. Looking back at the Eggleston's work with, with modern eyes, it's hard to sort of see where the difference, or where all the controversy comes with, with his photography. Uh, you know, you sort of look at it in a, with modern perspective and think, well, I like this or I don't. In the late 1970s, um, you know, or it was sort of the late 1960s rather, the, 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 the art photography world was dominated by, by black and white. Colour was something that commercial photographers used and, and people making holiday snapshots used. It certainly wasn't for the serious photographer and it certainly wasn't for somebody who, who, who was an, an art photographer. When Eggleston had his um, solar exhibit at the Museum, Museum of Modern Art, uh, Ansel Adams famously wrote to somebody and, and complained bitterly that, that, um, that Eggleston's work wasn't of any sort of consequence or any sort of substance because it was all in colour. And of course, having this work in colour, and it was, it was a first sort of solo, exclusively colour exhibition, paved the way for a lot of photographers to feel that they were allowed to, to photograph in colour. Some people had come before, sort of Herb Saul Leiter and, um, and, and some others. Um, but this was the first time that really a photographer had mounted an exhibition, or an exhibition had been mounted of a photographer's work, and, and the shackles had been taken off. The young Eggleston was influenced to a degree by Robert Frank and Henry Cartier-Bresson. And he met Cartier-Bresson a few years later, who also added to the list of people who did not like Eggleston's work. He, he recalls sitting at a table with, with Henry Cartier-Bresson uh, at, at a function and, and Cartier-Bresson turning to him and saying, look, you do realize that all of your work is just BS because it's in color. And, and, and that you can imagine, that's quite a put down, but Eggleston recalled that he just kind of went, well, thank you ever so much, got up and, and went to go and party elsewhere, which, is, which seems like, of course, a natural response for somebody who has made a career out of not really giving a damn and, and just doing what whatever feels to come naturally. And you see this throughout his photography. It is just all there. It's just a response to, to the world around him. And, and, you know, I think the world would be a better place, or certainly the photography world would be a better place, if there were more people who 
managed to just go with their gut and photograph what's around them in a way that that didn't try to have context and meaning and you know and making a, a, a mission statement if, if you will. William Eggleston is a great example of somebody who you could look at their, their photography and and begin to train your eye. You know there are so many people who go they think that the camera is the way of becoming a better photographer but really the the, the best tool that that a photographer has is are, are, are their eyes and when you look at somebody like like Eggleston he is he is not crafting things um, you know from from props and, and 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 setups and what have you he looks with his eyes and he brings the camera up to his face and he takes a photograph and somebody had asked him you know why have do you your process do you you bring the camera up to your eye and and then realize it's not a good photograph and then you see so you put the camera down and, and he's like well no I will bring the camera up to my eye because I've already taken the photograph with my eye and 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 that's that's a really great way of I think of, of looking at photography certainly if you're if you're interested in this kind of photography is is not constantly seeing what it looks like through a viewfinder but it's learning to see the world as a photographer as somebody who can frame and compose an image with with your eyes. Eggleston's use of color is, is, is in my opinion absolutely beautiful it, it, he got a, he has such a strong sense of of how the color works together and, and I think you know again we talked about this this kind of looking through through the lens of history at this remove it's it's hard to I'd imagine really grasp the impact that Eggleston's color photography had uh, certainly in in the early days when the world in which it inhabited or which it was elbowing its way into was a, was a purely monochrome uh, monochrome world where large black and white prints held sway and and here comes these young upstarts with their their brash and bold color prints you know and and Eggleston at the forefront and and it must have been a real shock and it must have been surprising in a way that 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 we we can't really grasp today but if you look at these photographs they still hold an impact for us even though they are images of the mundane and, and they're images of a world that does not exist anymore you know if you look at them all the stuff obviously they are very much of their time they still reach out from the page and they still grab us and, and Eggleston has said that even you know even today that um, you know he hasn't seen any decent reproductions of, of his prints um, because of the, the, the way that they were printed back in, in the late 60s and early 70s with, with, the, with the die sub process printing. The lesson that we can take from looking at Eggleston's work is that it doesn't matter that where we are or, or what confronts us as, as photographers uh, or even as non-photographers, we can look at the world and see not beauty but, but interest and, and, and things that are intriguing to us. So long as we just are, are happy to let go of our shackles about what we expect and what we believe should be the correct way of of looking at photographs and and that's what i love about eggleston's work that he he just reacts to what he sees and he photographs it and he says without comment either you like this this photograph or you don't and if you don't jog on if you do fantastic but that's all that there is to it and and don't try and, and scrape under the surface and find meanings that Eggleston has somehow secretively injected into his work because it isn't there. Whatever you see in his work is what you have found within his photography. I think it's, it's now more important than ever to to look at the work and the photography of, of people like William Eggleston to see that the mundane can be elevated to art if we just allow it to be and of course art can be anything that we want it to be. A good place to discover more about William Eggleston's work is his monochrome William Eggleston's Guide which was the accompaniment to the 1970s Museum of Modern Art show and that, that's a really good sort of yeah, starting point so if you are interested go and check it out it's fully available it's not out of print it's, it's really easy to find. Thanks ever so much for joining me here today on the Photographic Eye and I really hope that you enjoyed this brief look at the photography of William Eggleston. If you are new here and you haven't done so already please hit that subscribe button so you'll be make, make sure that you know when all these videos are coming out in the future. 
If you've got a photographer who you'd like to see featured here on this channel, please drop me a line below and uh, I'll look forward to hearing your input. Thanks again and I'll see you all again soon.